<laughs> A lot has been happening lately. Comfortable and uncomfortable things. Some of these happenings just leave me curious and confused as to why all of this is happening. I've been experiencing things to the point where I've broken down, and I shall tell you how and why right now. One day, I was sitting in front of the door to my brother's room, just casually sitting there, listening to music, as I waited on my brother to come back. When he finally came, just as I turned my head towards him to say something, I was kept completely shut and frightened over what I had just seen. I let out a small scream, which left my brother worried and motivated him to ask me why I had let out a sudden reaction. I explained it all to him about how I saw a solid figure of a man that stood right behind him. Now, I really didn't believe in the paranormal, and to see something like this just shook me. I did, and still do believe that spirits are real, but my view on seeing them had totally changed around after this incident. I am religious, and I pray more often than I used to back then, which has helped me a lot, because I feel more protected and safe. But it doesn't end there. When I found out that my brother was experiencing the same things as me, we told our mother, and she sat us down to explain it all. We found out that she had similar things happening to her in the past, too. And I had also learned that when my mother was trying to get pregnant with her first child, me, that she was targeted by black magic and had been attacked by a shadow person. That gives me a feeling that something, or someone, the spirits, may have gotten through some closed doors. I'm not a professional or anything, but it's something I assume may have happened. Anyway, we've had our house checked out by different mediums, and they all said the same things. They told us that something was in this house. But the thing is that I feel like there's more than one spirit in this house. One I sense as good and the other I sense as bad, but not demonically bad. I can feel it in my gut. Most times, out of nowhere, I will occasionally see a black mist pass by the corner of my eyes, but I end up dismissing them as my imagination. The way these spirits contact me are through my dreams, most of the times, rather than in my awake hours, although I've seen the solid figure of a man twice in the same hallway I had an encounter with the first solid figure that appeared behind my brother. At night, I feel cold touches, especially on the side of my head, and the feelings of pins and needles stuck into my hands. Very recently, it was as if I was completely drained of my energy, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't think straight. Hours later, I was totally fine and slept well, but this isn't the only time that something like that has happened. One night, I was sleeping and I felt this voice speak into my ear. It was vividly clear enough to make me understand the words being said, and the voice was soft, yet in a little harsh tone. It said something like, You think you're clever, don't you? I'm stronger than you, girl. Try me. That's when I woke up. My heart was racing so fast to examine if one of my siblings played a harmless yet frightening prank on me. But when I realized there was no way for my siblings to do that to me, I froze in shock. My bed was against a wall, then, and since my door is a bit broken and the floorboards haven't been fitted back in properly, if you open the door, it would create a loud sound that would make anyone jolt. I'm a light sleeper, by the way, so there was no way that anyone could have pulled it off. Plus, I don't sleep against the wall. I always sleep away from the wall, so I wouldn't have known and felt something get onto my bed and lay beside me. It's just confusing me, all of this. I found myself crying one day because of it. I don't know what to do. I've decided to keep myself devoted to God and to follow the light, as I know that's the only thing that assures me safety. 
I'm sorry for posting such a long story, but I would like to know your opinions and advice on what I should do or about what's happening to me. Thanks. Number two. My name is April. I'm 21 and have a story to tell you about the experience I had with the infamous Ouija board. You have heard stories of Zozo the demon, right? Well, he is real, and I have read stories on him, but didn't actually think it was true until it happened to me. Three months ago, I had moved in with my sister, and I had brought a couple friends over to hang out that evening. We were all smoking a cigarette when I came up with the brilliant idea to play the Ouija board and ask otherworldly spirits questions about the afterlife and questions about the future. Now, I have played the board by myself for many years with little to no negative spirits speaking with me, but this evening was in fact different. We sat at the table and put our hands on the cursor and moved it clockwise around the board as we said Ouija out loud three times. My friends weren't avid believers in the paranormal or using the board from rumors they had heard. I asked, is there anyone there? The cursor moved slowly to yes. Who are we speaking with? The cursor repeatedly went from Z to O and continued to do so after the question was asked. What do you want? It quickly spelled out her. Who is her? I asked. It spelled out my friend's name, and I was freaked. What do you want with her? It spelled out, I want her. Very quickly, the cursor returned to moving from the Z to the O yet again, and I was getting annoyed with this because it wouldn't tell me why it wanted my friend. It just spelled out, I want her, repeatedly. My friend, the one that Demon wanted, stupidly called him a pussy, and the board spelled out, death. That's when things got bad. I got angry and told her not to provoke him because he was capable of bad things, and I sure as hell didn't want anything happening to my friends. The other friend just sat there freaked out, not speaking the entire time, as we continued to ask it questions, which I don't recall. The cursor began feeling hot under my fingers, and I asked my friends if they felt it too. They said they did. I asked it another question, but its answer didn't make any sense it spelled out. The word it spelled out was mama, over and over, and would not move to any other letters, so I cussed at him because I was getting annoyed. The one friend took his hand off the cursor and refused to play any more, and the atmosphere immediately changed. I could feel Zozo in the room now, and the air was heavy, and I began to get scared. All of a sudden, I didn't feel like myself. I felt if something was inside me. I felt the most intense hatred I've ever felt before. I began to laugh hysterically and then cry like I had no control over my emotions. My mood then turned to hatred again, and I turned to look at my friend, the one the demon wanted, with the most evil smile. I felt it inside. It wasn't me smiling. It was the demon. We all stopped playing the board after that, but the heavy feeling in the air and its presence remained. It took a bit before everything felt normal again that night, and I felt like myself, but when it did, I was certainly relieved. I feared for my friend's safety that night, but fortunately, none of them experienced anything after leaving. My advice? Do not mess with the Ouija board. Evil Presence in the Flat Since moving out of the flat, when I was going through my divorce. I've made a point of not going back in there unless it was really necessary. When we had tenants renting the place, I had no need really, but the tenants left and my mom decided to move in there. Suddenly, I had to go there quite often. The atmosphere in the place was always thick to me. It was like the air was harder to breathe. On one specific night in April 2015, My mom sent me a message and told me strange things were going on in the flat. 
Not one to leave my mom alone when she was far less open than I was. I ran to the flat. She was sitting in the lounge when I came in, and she asked me to step into her room and tell me if I smelled anything. As I took the one step into her room and came to the closet, on my left, bed to my right, there was the very distinct smell of cigarette smoke hanging in the air. I walked towards the bed, and the smell decreased towards the closet, and the smell was stronger. No one in the yard smokes, so the chances that it could have been carried in from outside are zero. The closet is also not close to any windows, so the fact that the smoke was centralized to that spot was enough to get my hair standing on end. I went back to my mom and asked her if this was all she had been experiencing. She said no. The whole week, she could feel someone take hold of her ankles as she lay in bed, until one night where not only did something take hold of her legs, it pulled her halfway out until she got panicked and started kicking. By then, her legs were completely off of the bed. She swore to me for a second it felt like she had kicked a solid human being, but no one was there to be seen, although she clearly smelled the smoke. The weekend, I had Tim and Eileen over and explained the story to them. Tim went into the flat alone, leaving us by the pool, and after about five minutes, he came out. He said that the person in the flat was a man, middle-aged. He gave features to this man that had my mom and I looking at each other. For my South African compatriots, the man looked like a thinner version of Eugene Terror Blanche. I asked him if he could see the man's right arm, and Tim told me that the man made an effort of staying in silhouette. I went into Adam's room and fetched my mom's wedding album. I found a picture of my paternal grandfather and showed it to Tim. Tim nodded. The man in the flat was my mom's father, Johnny. Johnny had lost his right arm in a car accident. Considering he had been instrumental in the abuse I suffered in the flat, not to mention that he was responsible for the death of my gran when she was 32 years old. My mom was five at the time. Neither my mom nor I were very happy about the fact that he was in her home. My mom told me to take every picture of him out of the album. She took the pictures, gave them to Tim, and told him to burn them. After he had destroyed every picture, Tim told us what he needed to cleanse the flat, and he went in alone. He was busy for close to two hours. By then, it was late afternoon. As night came around, my mom went into the flat. For some odd reason, the main switch of the electricity was off. Strange. She switched the power on and went to her bedroom. My son, T, came into the flat and told her he smelled smoke. Since they are both asthmatics, very bad timing. My mom ran out of her room and saw the box that she had set down on the stove catch fire. Yes, not the smartest move putting flammable materials on a stove. Curious though, my mom never cooks in the flat, so the stove mains are always switched off on the circuit. Yet, every plate on the stove was glowing red, turned up to full heat, and the box and its contents were on fire. Mom yelled and grabbed T, rushing to get out. Tim rushed in, grabbed a box, dropped it in the sink, and doused the flames. Outside, both my mom and my son were having full-on asthma attacks. When Eileen and I were able to get my mom and my son calmed down and breathing, we speculated as to why the stove would have been turned on when it is never used. Tim stated very simply, You burn my pictures, I will burn you. A sick parting gift from a bad old soul.